Hello everybody, this is Indie Voice here, and today I am doing another special rant for everybody for today. And the name of that rant is talking about Kickstarter and video games. Now, we have seen several Kickstarter fails that have brought people a lot of questioning on, should I really be supporting somebody on Kickstarter for a video game? Honestly, it's a yes and no situation. It depends on the people that you, like, if you see their background and see how many games they've done in the past or what they can accomplish, if they can accomplish this. There are many, many of if and buts, this, that, in this whole subject. And it's something that really needs to be looked upon and touched, like, to tell you about, folks. Now, remember, these are just my honest opinions, things that need to be talked about. And I just wanted to mention this to folks. If you don't like what the conversation is leading to, please skip to the next video. There are tons of other videos to look at, and I'm pretty sure those will probably be your better liking. So today, we're talking about certain Kickstarters. Now, if we remember certain Kickstarters like My Number 9, uh, several others that just did not reach up to their potential, it's mostly going to be My Number 9, and there's several others that could have been done even better before, but... As you see, not many of them decided to succeed well because of, one, people can't trust the developers that use this Kickstarter to earn the money to get it. Now, same thing could be said with Fig. I mean, not many people trust Fig. Well, people, Tim Schafer and his group made this, and it seemed more trustworthy, but you're giving them a lot more money than you expect. Now, with Kickstarter... You get all these options, things to get, things you can acquire. One of them from my number nine was if you give them over like ten thousand dollars or something, you get to have a dinner with Kenji and Fuda himself. I kind of highly doubt that, but I mean, I met him before. Uh, it was at the Anime Expo. He had a translator with him, and he doesn't really speak that much English. Now, this game had a lot of promise. It showed a lot of pictures. It had a lot of things of people in the Mega Man area to be hyped about. Because one, Capcom has not been touching or even making or anything dealing with Mega Man. Last thing Mega Man was used upon was on Super Smash Bros. Other than that, he's just been sitting up on a shelf collecting dust. But then, now you have Beck, which is from my number 9, and... When they had so many promises for this game and DLC and other pictures that showed a lot of promise to it, and then when you finally get all the money for it, and then here comes a whole bunch of issues, that makes people start questioning that, should I really have funded this Kickstarter? Is it really worth the time? Honestly, folks, I would obviously say no. I mean, sure, yeah, board games apparently now are getting more of a successful Kickstarter percentage-wise than video games are on Kickstarters. It's just, it's, it's kind of like, it's true. I mean, board games, okay, this is not going to take too much time to create besides making sure everything's fully detailed, the rules are done, no spelling errors, and it gets shipped out. Now, when it comes to video games, it takes a little bit more time, about more than a, like two to three years. Depends on the game, unless you're talking about Duke Nukem Forever, which that took about 15 years. Same thing with uh, Final Fantasy 15 and or 13 Versus. There's a lot of other names that were named for it. But those games took years and years upon time to make that game to actually happen. Now, my number nine took longer than expected because of certain issues with the Unreal 4 engine, Unreal 3 engine or something, when the Unreal 4 engine finally came out, and a lot of issues came upon when it transferred over, which is completely understandable because this is a past engine. But now when you made all these promises to people, and then your main head guy there, or the guy of the forums called everybody idiots, you're not looking too good when it comes to your Kickstarter at all. So I really technically don't blame people that they can't really trust video games created on Kickstarter. I mean, there's several games that became very successful on there, like, Fri like Fight Night, or uh, Indie Pogo, or Finn, uh, Flynn, Son of Crimson, a fast-paced 2D action platformer. There's a lot that really succeeded and are still being worked upon, like uh, Blue Omen Operation, or the Iron O Dark Turn-based tactical RPG, or Arbiter, or Heartbound and Sharpbound. All those games are actually been fully funded, and they are showing constant updates. Things are showing that the game is progressing, 
and a set time and date when the game will be fully released. Now, that's what you should appreciate when you're coming to a game that's asking to be funded. You want to be constantly updated. You want to show that your progressions, your animations, some sort of artwork is being worked on. It gives the person that has been funding your game some gratification that it's still being worked upon and they didn't waste their money. Now, I've had several ideas of the fact that, you know, there should be a Kickstarter or some sort of website that in just straight games and people can have uh, the choice of when they're funding their game to get constantly updates of how the game is going so they can feel satisfied that the game is still alive and they don't feel like they've been cheated out of or they can easily have a constant live streams or a discord to show hey talk about the game here we're gonna talk to you about uh, the rest of the stuff we're going about and doing what uh, some other things and updates followed by we'll post some live streams and things that are being worked upon with Kickstarter if they actually were able to give those type of options towards people that are developing video games that would give more satisfaction to those that are putting their money towards it or do, uh, making sure it's successful it gives more gratification but when it comes to several other people such as I know I'm gonna keep saying my number nine for this because one they've been pretty much a prime example of what not to do I mean look I could say no man's sky you don't put a whole bunch of fancy promises before everything else and then you release the game and then none of those promises are on there that doesn't work out and it kind of pisses people off that you decided to lie and then after several months to probably a year later Okay, now we started putting patches and we started updating all that stuff that we said we would do in there. But I have heard that No Man's Sky deserves a second chance now, which I, okay, I'll give it a second chance. It has been known to be the world's biggest video game. I mean, 18 quintillion. No one's ever reached that high. Sorry, I digressed a bit. Let me go back to the other subject. Now, these ideas could be implemented. These ideas could be put in there. Somebody could make a website that can actually do this sort of thing because it's going to, one, support them when it comes to their games because not all the time does indie games ever get supported or get fully funded to be able to do its things. Or the so-called publisher will otherwise destroy it from the inside out because there's several things they don't like about the game, which makes it not very playable. Now, uh, and that's what I think about this stuff. I mean, if you're going to create a game, you want to make sure the people you are creating this stuff for is very satisfied on what you're showing to them and the fact that they get constant updates. I don't, if not that, a live stream broadcast of what you're doing or how everybody else is working and stuff on the game, having a meeting about it getting people more interested in what you're doing with the game which gives people more of that gratification of look at this game being created then i'm watching them do it and i'm reading their updates man this is an amazing experience and that's what people really want when it comes to games such as anything that's being uh, funded like on indiegogo or kickstarter or uh fig or any of those other ones you need to make sure to make people are satisfied and they don't feel like they're being cheated out of something. Because if you do that, and then when it comes to the game being fully funded and you have all these things that you're going to give out for their perks and everything, and you don't do it, then you just got a lot of angry people and people now just don't trust you as much, which is not what you want when you're first releasing a game. Anyway, that's my rant about Kickstarters, things that do with video games and Kickstarters, things that could have been updated in the future. If you like this rant, uh, comment below. Tell me what you think about this and do you think that they could have easily changed this for the better when it comes to any developers or people in general that want their games to be funded. If you have something else you want to say about it, then I'll be gladly to listen and answer your questions. Uh, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing.